Hi, welcome back. Um, we are going to work with our brown paper bags today. If you have something, it could be a big shopping bag or this is like a, I'm pretty sure it's from a Chinese takeout a few months ago. But um, if you have a brown paper bag, we're going to cut it open so we can work on the flat sheet of it. So you can either tear it apart down here or right where these kind of adjoin, right? You can just cut it. Okay, so we don't need that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open it up. We're gonna cut along one of these seams too. I'm not being super careful, um, but you know, if you can cut kind of a straightish line, if you can't, it's gonna be fine. So now I have a nice flat piece of brown paper. What I want to cut now is two little squares or, you know, rectangle, whatever you have is fine. So, um, or whatever you choose is fine. Again, it's not the, uh, it's not important that all of ours look the same. Okay, so I am not going to work quite this big, so I'm going to cut more here and save everything because everything can be used for something else like I love the way brown paper looks with sharpie and if you have like a white gel pen or something it looks so zingy like it just woo! all the contrast in there is really fun so I always save all my brown paper bags all right so now I have two little shapes and you know I may, when I'm all done, I may trim that off. I don't know. But what we're going to do now is a continuous line drawing. So we're going to draw with our black Sharpie or whatever black um, ink pen, marking pen that you have. Even if it's a black, you know, Crayola marker, that will do too. But I think what you want is something really dark and black. And we're going to draw a continuous line drawing. What that means is we're not gonna pick our pen up from the paper. We're just gonna go until we're done. And we're gonna, on one, on the first one, we're just gonna use really geometric shapes and straight lines and angles. So a straight line, well, let's just do it. Um, camera girl, can you angle down to my drawing? So I'm gonna put the pen on my paper and I am just going to draw. I always like a border around thing, so I'm just going to draw. But it doesn't have to be all the way around. But see how I'm using really straight lines? And I'm going to come down and move up. And since we're doing geometric, maybe I'll get a circle in there. But these, all of these shapes are part of the same line. Ooh, triangles are geometric. And we can even overlap shapes. See how I've drawn through these shapes? And I'm gonna go back, and I'm gonna go down. Maybe I'll make some more circles. And I am, I actually, it's not that I just don't even mind if these shapes overlap, I even like it. Because what, what it's, was happening is where they overlap, they're making other shapes. I don't have anything up here, so I'm going to come up. And maybe I'll make another big circle that's kind of dissecting some of my triangles. And now I've kind of filled all of my paper with shapes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my original line where I started so that I have closed shapes. So a closed shape is something that contains everything around it, right? That's a closed circle versus a half circle is not closed. There's no, there's no difference where the, the inside of the shape and the outside of the shape are. So, but for this lesson, I want all my shapes closed. I see some openings down here, so I'm gonna close those. 
See, there's no difference between the outside of the shape and the inside of the shape, so I'm gonna close them. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take, and you can take whatever you want, um, maybe colored pencils. Um, I wouldn't use markers. I would keep it to be more of a, um, a lighter thing, but you could use crayons or colored pencils. And I'm just gonna start filling in some of these closed shapes and see what happens. Um, I'm not gonna fill all of them in, but I am gonna fill, I'm just gonna be careful. And this is this is the fun part, because this is a part where you can really use your own judgment and you can decide what looks best to you. You know, some people might like a lot of wild colors and maybe they wanna fill all of them in. Other people maybe like just to have a lot of that, that brown paper as the color of their shapes. One thing that I do make sure to do, and, and again, this is a personal choice thing, is I make sure to, um, anytime I bring a color in, I just make sure it's in about three different spots, three or four different spots. Um, that way there's just some continuity to the color. There, it, you know, it repeats and but again, you don't have to. It really depends on your personal taste. All right, I'm gonna get some blue here for this shape. And what I'm noticing, I didn't do this on purpose, but this is also the fun part about just kind of working and seeing what happens, is I noticed that some of my shapes ended up making a little bit of a landscape. Um, I didn't really think about that when I did it, but this starts to feel like a tree, and these start to feel like little bushes. And this even feels like um, mountains in front of a sun or a moon or something. So when you're doing this, watch for stuff like that, little surprises that show up in what you're doing. And, um, you know, have fun with that. You can exaggerate it or you can ignore it. You can do whatever you want. Because honestly, it's just art. Okay, so I'm just picking, oh, I'm gonna do a couple more spaces of blue. I have this little closed space here. I'm gonna get some blue in. Oh, uh, where else? Let's see. Maybe right down here. I don't know why. Just cause. Okay, I have some purple. And even if this is a landscape, there's nothing that says I have to treat it like that. Like I don't, I don't have to do the sky blue. I don't have to do trees green. I can do it all pinks and purples. I can make up whatever I want. So I'm bringing some purples in here. But I probably will. I kind of like that this accidentally turned into a landscape. So I'm going to go with it. Although those teeth kind of do like, like monster teeth, which is pretty appealing to me. Let's see. I'm going to come right down here. When I'm, when I'm working and drawing, especially when I'm doing something like this where I'm just kind of messing around, I try to be super open to what's happening. Um, and I just, everything I do, I don't judge it, I just observe it. Like, oh, I noticed that I kind of have these stripes, like my colors are close together. I don't know, maybe it's fine, maybe it's not, I don't know, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna bring one more over here, purple. Okay, so I'm not gonna spend too much more time on this because we're gonna move on to the next one. I am gonna pretend that this is the sun now though, since I kinda saw that happening. And I'm gonna fill it in. Okay, so if it were me, I'm, or it, it is me, <laughs> so I am gonna finish this later. But we don't have to do that all together. These are fun things that we can get started together. And then you can finish. You can spend all day doing it. Because, right, you got nothing but time. So I'm going to move on to the next one. 
For this one, I'm gonna do the same thing, but instead of straight lines and geometric shapes, I'm gonna do curvy lines and organic shapes and see what happens. So, fresh sheet of paper, black ink pen, let's go. Curvy lines. Oh, you don't have to make those sounds. I almost can't help it though. The other thing I always look at is it's always nice to have a variety. A variety of big clothes shapes, little clothes shapes. If it's all even, it gets a little predictable. Okay, so I can look and make sure all my shapes are closed. I see right here, this shape. Oh, it's closed to there, but this one's kind of open. So maybe I make it a little, I'm gonna close it off. All right. And then the same thing, you can spend some time just picking colors to fill in. Oh, let's do this one with crayons and see how that looks. I guess I'll use green since I kind of got that started. Ooh, crayons looks good too. I like when I'm doing this, I like my crayon to be nice and dark and not a lot of open texture. Like I don't like to see a whole bunch of the um, brown paper through, but you do it how you like it. I always like to be nice and careful with my edges, but there's a million ways to art correctly. So you, you follow your instincts in what you think looks good. Okay, so that's just an example. We're gonna do one more thing. Similar um, concept, but instead of just doing random organic and geometric shapes, we're gonna do a face. So this is a contour line. This is a continuous contour line that we made closed shapes, just like we talked about in the beginning. Now, I'm going to do a blind contour. What that means is I'm going to gouge my eye. Just kidding, I'm not gonna gouge my eyes out. I'm not gonna look at my paper though. I'm going to look at the Zuzu. She's sitting over here. I'm gonna politely ask my camera woman not to pan over to her because everything in my house outside of this tiny radius is a disaster. So we're just gonna stay right here. But I'm gonna look at Zuzu. And I'm not gonna look at my paper and it's the same thing. I'm not gonna pick my pen up off the paper. I'm just going to trust that my eyes will, prop, will guide my hand. Okay, here we go. Zuzu, smile. Zuzu doesn't smile. Actually, she is though right now. Okay, ooh, I'm just following around. There's some glasses, glasses. I'm gonna get her ear in there, maybe. Neck. I guess we better get a mouth in there. And then up inside the glasses are two little eyeballs. And then the other side of her hair. Okay. I have no idea what's happening. Should we look? Woo! <laughs> that looks awesome! I didn't know how that was gonna go. So it doesn't really look like a person, but it looks pretty cool. So I can do the same thing now. I can go ahead and color in shapes if I want, or I can close off. I think one thing that I really liked about those other ones is that there was a border around them. And I, I just really, I think that looks really cool. I think it makes a piece feel finished. So I might, right from here, right from her neck, 
and you could do it however you want but I'm just gonna make a border that cut that encapsulates all of this and again the other thing that it's doing is it's making a closed shape so I can so when I'm filling it in I know where I'm starting and stopping so now I'm gonna fill this in on but first now that I have a border around here I can trim my edges to make it kind of fit and look kind of finished and nice so I'm just gonna go like this trim it up a little bit Oh my gosh, Zuzu. This should be for your school picture in the school annual. I don't mean to get a little overly excited, but I that that's the kind of stuff I like. Like I like to look at stuff like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and color this in. I hope you guys do this. I want to see your work. Um, make your projects, and if you don't have brown paper, it'll work on white paper. If you know just use what you have and just see what happens and it's so much fun you can make a million of them and if they're all bad oh well um, just keep going it's and usually I think it's best if we as artists we don't judge our own work we just make it you let other people worry about if it's good or bad that's what Andy Warhol says anyway so but what I'd really love to have you guys do is I'm gonna open up a folder on my Facebook page and I'd love it if you could have a parent take a photograph of your artwork and upload it. I think it'll be really fun for all of us to see since we're all doing kind of the same thing. So, and adults too, this isn't just for kids. So I'm gonna finish mine and I'll post them. I'd love to see yours. But one more thing, I thought of a few more supplies that we might be using that you can gather. Wax paper, if you have it. Tin foil, if you have it. We might need some, um, containers for like water or uh, paint because we have black and white paint or any color of paint that you have. Um, Q-tips, bottle caps. If you have keys, this is another thing that you better ask a parent about. If you have a key, um, I have a fun idea for something to do with that. Uh, sour cream lid again if we need to do painting if we have to put paint on there um, if you can if you have some of these around or if you go someplace and get some these to-go containers they have a number six on their little recycle number um, I think and I'm gonna experiment with this but I think we can shrink these in the oven and make shrinky dinks and then the final thing is some dark paper. Um, construction paper is fine, whatever. And it doesn't have to be black, but just dark blue or black or just something really dark. That is all. We'll see you guys tomorrow.